So welcome back to Team Offroad CC 23. We're now on episode four. And as the years progressed, things have gotten a little bit more serious. So in this episode, you're gonna follow me as I do my first race of the season. And then a little bit later on, you're gonna join Suvi as she preps a little bit more for her e-gravel race later in the year. All right, we'll see you in a sec. So this is the second round of the Southern Enduro Series. So we're in Tiverton. Um, and even though it is the second round, this is my first race. And so today we're gonna really just take things lightly, just put a little bit of pressure on, try to get a feel of how racing is again. So it has been quite a long time since last year. Um, so yeah, I'm going to just oh, go into practice, take it easy, just try to read the terrain, see what's going on. It's been super dry, so that's gonna be something to get used to as well. Um, so yeah, we've already signed on, got number plates, got the um, little timing chip. And yeah, we'll go open face on the old Met helmet and we'll crack on. Let's do some running. Cheers. All right, so we're going into stage one and I'm actually quite excited for this race because this is the first, first time I've had a chance to ride this bike in anger. That's feeling pretty good. Oh, that's a hell of a drop. So yeah, as I said before, the whole plan is just to take this super easy oh, and not fuck jumps. Oh, <laughs> yeah, just take it easy. So it seems pretty grippy at the moment. But it is useful to carry some speed just to find where that grip or where the limits of the grip are. So that's a long, reasonably pedally stage, stage one. So last year, I placed 20 seconds at this race. And I think the aim, if there is one, well, it'd be nice to beat that. But I would be disappointed if I didn't. After all, this is just trying to get used to that pressure. All right, so we're going to stage two. Last year, I crashed here on that last corner, so something I've got to be careful about. Ooh. So conditions are staying pretty consistent across the thing, this race. Nice bit of a cool on a level one. Let's not let that ruin my confidence. All right, so we are just trying to carry speed, make it easy. So for an enduro bike, this one's quite short. So where all these corners are coming in, it's actually pretty helpful. I like can kind of whip it around. Oh, flipping out, gotta look where that's going. Yeah, it's getting dusty. Things are blowing out a little bit. All right, stage three. Hopefully we can take it a bit easier <laughs> than the other stages. It's dusty. So I think the aim of the game on this one is just gonna not push. But stay flowy. Okay, there's a dog. Cool, okay. Is it easier to take that inside of that corner? Oh, 
Okay, so this is the last stage. Oh. That feels pretty good. A bit of the boat. I'll keep looking where I'm going, that's oh, what I'm struggling with today. This off camera business isn't fun. Oh. So that was practice done and there's quite a lot to think about. As you can probably tell, it was a bit tumultuous. I came off the bike a couple of times or had some very scary scares. Um, but with that, it's given me a few things to think about. So there's some sections in each stage that I now, they're ingrained in my memory, so I now know what to do with them. So, you know, there was that roller on stage two that hurt quite a bit. Um, don't use that as a drop. And there's the high line at the end of stage one. There's a couple of high lines elsewhere. Um, it's about to rain or it's just started to rain a little bit. So that might play something in, but hopefully it won't. Um, so yeah, off to do some race runs and we'll get back to you afterwards. I forgot how difficult enduro is. Um, of course, it's been so long since I've tried to ride really quickly. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going well. I think the stage is reasonably smooth. I've had a couple of moments where I've really scared myself. I feel as if I've got more speed in me. It's just having the strength to get the pedals cranking again. It's just, yeah, feeling good. We'll get the next couple down and yeah, we'll have a chat after that. It's incredibly hot. I'm incredibly tired. I'm just slamming those caffeine gummies. So yeah, hopefully those alone will keep me going for the rest of it. So that is my first race done and I won't lie, I'm completely surprised. Um, the bike has treated me really well. Um, I've gelled with it, which I won't say I have my doubts, but I was a little bit skeptical before, but um, actually riding in anger, um, trying to ride it quickly has kind of got, or allowed me to get to know the bike properly. And it actually excels in 
a good range of places, especially like those tight corners. It pedals amazingly, so you can just pop right out. And I've been able to ride this bike with full confidence. It's got a great suspension set, thanks to Jake. The tires are hooking up really nice. The wheels, the um, engagement on that hub is supreme. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with the bike, of course, all the kit, and yeah. So in terms of the race, I've definitely achieved my goals. My goals, generally with the bike, and just trying to put myself in under race pressure again. And when I said that I'll take it a little bit easier, um, I definitely didn't. As soon as I got between the tapes, I started taking it a little bit more seriously. Um, tried to pedal that bit harder. You know, stage one had a few issues. Um, that was the most peddly one to be to start off with. Um, I nearly punched a hole through my chest with the, ste uh, the steerer tube and I punched a tree. Some of the th things a bit swollen there. Um, but after that, I think I've ridden as best I possibly could. Um, full confidence, really happy. So I've got provisional fourth out of sixth. Um, so that will probably go down and that is no issue to me. I'm completely happy with that. So yeah, that is first race done and dusted. So the next one we're gonna to go to the Southern Enduro Series in Minehead. That's a British National Enduro Series race. That's a lot more serious than this. Um, and yeah, we'll see you over there in a couple of months. But first off, we are going to sign you over to Subi. He's gonna do some e-graveling. We'll see you over there. Hello, a little bit of a change of scenery here. So you've come from Liam's racing trails to my kitchen. I am going to be doing some bike maintenance and a training ride in my section of this video. So I'm gonna take you through my tire change setup. So I am changing my tires today to the Terra Trails, which are these ones. They are a slightly knobblier version of the Terra Speed tires that I've been running this far. And the reason being for this swap, just I want a bit more, more traction. I'm going to kind of give the bike a test. How does it fare? How does the battery last? What do I need to maybe pay attention to in terms of preserving the battery at the actual event? So yeah. First, we're gonna set some tubeless stuff up though, so I better get started. Right, so I've got both of my wheels off now, so I'm gonna pop these Terra Speeds, which look like this, the tread off. And then I'm going to put some of the rim tape on because my rim tape is not in the greatest condition and then I'm going to swap these bad boys on. So let's see how long this is going to take. So I've got the old rim tape off now and I'm gonna I've cleaned the rim so that there's nothing on it and then I'm gonna put the new rim tape on and the reason if you've never done tubeless is like often if your tubeless setup is just not setting rim tape is likely the reason because the rim tape is basically blocking the spoke holes, nipple holes. So if the rim tape isn't tight enough, there's gonna be air leaking into the system, which means that the tubeless setup won't work. So it's well worth getting a good rim tape and also paying attention when you install it so that it's actually sitting perfectly on the rim. Right, rim tape is on. So now we have to put through a valve and then I'm gonna pop on this tire and then we hope for the best. It's the moment of truth when you pump it up and see if it actually holds air or not. Right, next, let's try if it holds. I have arrived to my riding location. There's lots of bikes here today because there's a gravel crit race happening, but 
I'm actually not gonna take part in that. I'm just gonna do a chill ride. And my bike is still up and running. I set it tubeless today for James's information. <laughs> so yeah, tires are still holding up and hopefully they will also hold up for the ride. But yeah, I might need to take this one off because I actually can't um, can access the buttons to change the modes. But yeah, we are actually at um, UK's biggest biggest onshore wind farm. There is this is the closest gravel that I have near me, and it is quite a cool place to ride gravel. Um, one more thing before I'm going. So this is kind of this is the app. The my smart bike so where i can see everything that's going on with the bike so i can see i have 96 percent of battery left and 75k so we'll see how this is going to look like after the ride i can also tailor my um the assistant assistance profile so i can set the green one to be like 20 percent assistance the red one to be 100 percent and everything um, but I've got everything set up now so we're just gonna go and then I'm gonna check back in to see how much battery I used on this ride later on. But we got one final climb, like a big climb that I've ever, I've never done on the e-bike. So I'm quite excited to see how, how it's gonna do on that because it's always the last final climb to get up to the visitor center. And I don't really particularly like that climb, but I think on the e-bike, I would like it a bit more. It was, it was a good ride and I still have plenty of battery left so I think it's quite um, reassuring for the upcoming race that I have so much battery left even though I was smashing up the hills, dropping James and all. It was a good, good test out ride and the tubeless setup was really good. Um, it was better to ride less bumpy than it was with the tubes and I really like the Terra Trail tires I've used them for a long time before as well and they just they're really grippy tires even though they don't have that kind of high of a tread pattern so really like them and this is gonna be a good setup for the Raiders in late August but that is all from me I'm gonna get dropping dropping that is all from me I'm gonna get to packing the bike in back into the car but in the next episode um, it's gonna be all about Liam so there's gonna be no me in that video it's gonna be Liam racing his big big race in mine head so if you want to see how he does in that yeah you should check out the next video that is coming up and if you like our videos make sure to subscribe and like all the videos as well but yeah I will see you at the end of August or probably September for you when I'm doing my big, big gravel race on my cross hill. <laughs>